Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. Do you know what? I think I'm in the mood for more plastic surgery, girls. My breast augmentation. Actually, I'm not, I've had enough. <laughs> so you were just lying? So my lovelies, welcome back to another episode of Dr. 90210. So in the last episode of this series, there was actually a huge discussion in the comments about whether plastic surgery for children should be considered. And let me just say, your conversations were just off the scale, should we say, in terms of how much there actually was. That right at this moment, it has 770 comments. Can you believe that? That's like double what this series usually gets on my Chanel. So you were all very interested in why children may or may not or should or should not get cosmetic surgery or just people under the age of 18 getting cosmetic surgery should we say and that's the end of that chapter so one of the top comments on the last video is by desi mastin and they say i can't imagine being able to get a rhinoplasty at 16 my nose is a symbol of my native american heritage and when i look at it i see my grandmother it took me 25 years for me to love my nose and if my teenage self had her way it would be gone i feel like in the current world that we live in it's so easy to get swept up in why you don't like something on your face or your body. So I'm a millennial. I grew up in the era of America's Next Top Model and rail thin women being considered the epitome of beauty. It's actually epitome, but I also like epitome. So now that means that when I gain weight and all of my fat goes to my hips, my bum and my legs, my initial reaction is to feel like, ugh. Why is this so annoying? If I could take a tablet to get rid of all that, I would. So I do think that while I am pro plastic surgery and pro getting anything changed that you want to, it is also really important to consider why you're getting it done. And I just feel like getting bullied for having a very specific type of nose may not be the most healthy way of getting plastic surgery, should we say. That being said, my loves, are you ready to visit the doctor's office once again today, my lovelies? Are you ready to look at what we might be getting on the plastic surgery table today? This series has shown us the behind the scenes of a lot of plastic surgery so far. We've seen lip implants, we've seen nose jobs, we've seen boob jobs, we've seen chin plasty. Chin plasty is my winner of season 16. And? Slay. Today I am back on the Monster Ultra Fiesta because I fancied a little bit of a change to remember why. I love her. I love her so much. The energy in the studio today, my loves, quite incomprehensible. Oh, that's nice. Do you know, I've made a fatal flaw with my hair yesterday. I put in slightly too much leave-in conditioner and it is lank today, girls. Lank! So, my lovelies, get your scalpels at the ready. Pump yourself full of anaesthetic and let's watch Dr. 90210. Disclaimer, don't do any of that. Tonight on Dr. 90210, Ooh. one woman risks her life to look like a star. A st oh, is this a BBL? Beverly Hills, she's got gout. Oh my God, a shoe. The scalpel is burning, a mirror and a tree, and a woman's curvy spine. Oh look, lips. This intro is bizarre, truly bizarre. Right, okay, come on. Dr. 90210, go! Dandelions are on meth. Down is the A. Okay, right. Oh, look at the car. Hello. Hello. 22. My name is Patty, and I'm going to go see Dr. Robert Ray to go get butt implants. Patty. And one of the main reasons why I'm doing it is for modeling and also to feel much better about myself. Okay, interesting. Interesting we have a similar situation as what we had a couple of episodes ago, which was, I'm getting this plastic surgery for modeling purposes. You wanna be on top? Now, butt implants for modeling. This would have been, when would have this aired? This would have aired, Dr. 90210, I think it was like 2008, 2009. Height of size zero craze, but it was just starting to die out and become a little bit more body positive. Nowhere near as body positive as we are today, although we do seem to be on a pendulum trajectory that's swinging back to size zero. No, 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 we don't need any of that, my love. Evil. No. So, Patty here wants butt implants. Do we actually hear a lot about butt implants anymore? I think I did a video a while back that explored potential issues with butt implants. I remember I did one on silicone injections. I know that for sure. But butt implants as such? Mm. This just in. Buxom blonde bimbo can't remember her own videos. More at six. How long you you were thinking of doing this surgery? Since I went to high school, I hate 
growing up without a butt. I hated that. She said there, 22. She's 22 years old. She's grown up since high school and wanted a butt. Is high school in America, do you finish that at 18? Is that what that is? So she's had like four years of like, I want a booty. You know, I just hate it. Lovely Everybody lenses. knowing me oh, as I had no nice. butt. <laughs> I would even tell my mom, you know, people make fun of me at high school. And yeah. I told myself, I was like, if that ever does come true, which is butt implants, I'm going to get it. So I have been very lucky with my genetics, shall I say, that I've never had to... I've never been in a position where I haven't had a butt. Let's just say that. Even when I was a tiny little twink. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I was never a twink. So you were just lying? I still had severe cake, even though I was, gosh, what, like nine stone wet. Now, weirdly enough, is technically, I want to explore this conversation with everybody here in the comments box below, because I can understand wanting to, to get a BBL, because BBLs kind of like smooth everything out, don't they? They kind of make, do they, 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 they sort of like fill in the hip dip concept, don't they? The hip dip concept. Somehow we've patented the idea that hip dips are incorrect. I don't know. Who are these people deciding this? Unhinged. She's pretty, but look at her hip dips. Shut up! Look closely! Really closely! There's a bone! And if the skin goes on the bone, then there's gonna be a dip! Cause there's a dip in the bone! But butt implants, much like breast implants, are there to like produce volume, roundness, and fullness, aren't they? Am I right in saying that potentially a similar effect to butt implants could be gotten from the gym? I mean, if you are on Instagram, I'm sure all of you are, the amount of like men that I get on my Instagram feed that are just fully caked up on a Tuesday going to the gym, sweating like nobody's business, and none of them, as far as I know, have butt implants. Although but the butt pad, there is butt padding, isn't there? And that's a current scandal that's happening in fitness world. My goodness, what are these influencers up to, girls? I want to talk to the manager, girl. I'm no stranger to the gym. I have let my gym behavior lapse currently, but I have, I definitely noticed that when I was doing squats, kettlebell deadlifts and lunges, all of those had a profound effect on the roundness of my bum. Naughty mummy. I'm very, 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 very much a fan of go and get the least amount done for the maximum outcome. And that goes with all kind of like surgery and I guess kind of like lifestyles full stop. With like breasts and lip fillers and having like an ultra slim hourglass snatch waist, I guess you can't really achieve that with, like you can't go to the gym for bigger lips and you certainly can't go to the gym for a bigger, for bigger breasts. I mean, oh. I mean, men go to the gym for a bigger chest. Oh, I love a muscle chest. She's a slut. Anyway, this has been quite the rant. Okay, butt implants, here we go. There are more plastic surgeons on my floor than in the state of Montana. Oh, here she is. So it's a very competitive business. So I do television Mansion shows, in Pasadena. shows, and we actually go Imagine, yes. imagine living there. Imagine going onto your balcony and being like, ta-da, I'm just going through these gigantic doors. <laughs> Margaret, have you fed the alpacas this morning? They're very upset. I've got no interest in talking to you. Distinguished families, I mean, give talks. I'm Robert Ray, Dr. Ray. So he gets to I'm a consultant. cosmetic surgeon and plastic reconstructive MPP. surgeon in Beverly Hills. Mistress the cosmetic of surgeon paranormal needs to market psychics. himself or herself. So there's a huge competition, so I need to promote. And all of us have a different style of promoting ourselves. Okay. I would go out and have my hair done three times a week and hand out my business card to the hairdresser, hopefully that they would send they would send me a patient. This is water. What do you notice about the edges of this implant? Watch some of these ripples? young ladies lean over in the beach and watch what happens right over here. Oh. You can see the ripples. This is Dr. Mandlock, and feel free to ask him whatever you would like. Dr. Mandlock's probably one of the better known obstetricians here in Beverly Hills. He's a good friend of mine, he's also my neighbor. Ooh! And so imagine, imagine, imagine. Actually, I was gonna say, imagine living. <laughs> Imagine living to like next door to your colleague. I do. Rolly's three floors up. You're dying for it. Deranged. So we went and we gave a talk together. I've been in private practice for 20, 21 years since 1983. I performed liposculpting for 17 years and I have treated over 3,000 patients. These uh, talks that we give at homes can be very successful sometimes. Uh -huh. Oh, that's not his house? I, of course it's not, we've seen his house. Okay, so that was a talk he was giving at somebody's mansion being like, hello, prospective clients, please come along and have your boobies done. 
time for a brow lift. Oh. <laughs> Doctor 90210, girls! Oh, she's dead. There's the women on the game. A palm tree woman, she's going Today shopping. Uh, 92 Jams, radio Jam. station right here in Los Angeles. Jam! Thank you. Must be jelly because jam don't shake. How vile. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you so much. Hey, so is this really like. Beautiful. This Michelle. is the most storyline we've gotten from. <gasps> Look how it isn't! Oh my god! I was just about. I just made a quote from Drag Race. Oh, spooky ladies. Mary loves dick. So. Interestingly, we haven't seen much of like Dr. Ray's family storyline for a while. The reality TV aspect of this show kind of stopped a little bit for a while. So it's interesting that we're now back fully into it. And he's going on a promotional tour of like radio stations and stuff, I guess. Is that what's happening? I feel like that's what's happening. Yes! Michelle is a radio host. She came to me some time ago, had some work done on her breast. Hey, what's going on? Are you she looking went to good? Dr. Are you Ray? Like, yes, but I haven't good? seen her in six months. That's wild because now Michelle Visage has a documentary called Explant because she was experiencing breast implant illness from her implants from Dr. Ray. <gasps> Scandal girls. Good, are you massaging? Well, I, yes, but oh I have a good seen just six fully boobs oh, out in the green room. Beautiful. Or the blue room. Beautiful. And they're soft. You just have women coming and flashing. They're beautiful. Them. You know, I get flashed in bizarre places. Are they gorgeous? You have Dr. Ray in the house. He happens to be uh, probably so, like, one of the premier the lady. surgeons. So like, caress the lady. Like, he didn't ask then. He wasn't like, do you mind if I feel? He was just like, ah. Uh. Is that tea? Uh, Dr. Ray is creepy as hell. So creepy. Right, what's Michelle up to now? Ketamine and MDMA. Probably one of the premier plastic surgeons in all of LA. He's mine. Got some nice <laughs> boobs from him. Plastic surgery is on the rise. And, and it's not taboo like it used to be she when somebody so got, ooh, she got a nose job. Now it's like, wow, nice nose Great job. Great work. You know, if you look better, you're going to do better in everything. Marriage, work. You know, love life, everything. I think yeah. marriage and love life should be the same thing. Really no you know, we like women and we like <laughs> we like voluptuous and uh, you know these skinny little things. You're wasting money, really. And you're Can't wasting see your it. body going through general anesthesia. If I'm going to be knocked out, I want to wake up with bangers the size yeah. of my head. Oh, well, that's not the point of plastic surgery. The plastic surgery is to get proportionate enhancement that can alleviate dysmorphia in some way or another. Oh my God, the sky bar goes Dr. Ray's office. Here we go. She's doing her taxes. Hey. Patty's first Hello, consultation. Right. Hello. Good BB. to see how's the trip. Zahara Okay. Have a seat right here. Today we're meeting with Patty, and uh, she's interested in uh, butt augmentation, so we're going to talk about that. Yes. The real thing I do with butt augmentation, I just chisel this. Interesting. So they on this show, they never once blurred a breast, but a butt crack? Too far, girls. No. I'm going to cream. Also, that is quite a thong that she is wearing. It kind of reminds me of those. Do you remember those candy necklaces that you can also get as underwear, girls? Sluts. I just chisel this into a cute little upside down heart. Then oh. we make a little incision here, hidden in the glutei. You know, these things are the glutei, okay? okay? And then through that, we place two very nice implants, one here and here. Oh, Let's so, go next to okay. In the process of butt implants, it does sound like there is a level of uh, like, uh, not like it's not liposuction, is it? What's it called? Lipo contouring? Is that what it's called? Like body contouring with lipo liposuction in a way, I guess. Interesting. I didn't actually realize that. I just sort of thought that it was implant. How long do you think until like you could sit down? Or, like, Excellent question. I don't want you to sit down for a week. Oh really? Desires as far as looks is because no sitting down for a week. No sitting down for. A How do you rest when you have a butt augmentation? Then do you just kind of have to like. I guess you must have to lay on your front, mustn't you? And also like, what are the sizes of, how do you choose the size of like, butt implant? And is it the same similar sort of implant as a breast implant? Oh, we're gonna learn today, girls. No. Desires as far as looks has become celebrity driven. Now everyone wants the butt implants because of Jennifer Lopez. Because okay. of just Jennifer yeah. Lopez, Lopez yeah. had yeah. button okay. plants. Okay. Yeah. Right? Bye. You're okay. all set. I'll see you there. Okay. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Go into the cupboard. <laughs> Van Cleef. Louis Vitoire. Bus stops. Right. Oh, oh look, family keep drama. My original clothes for as long as I could, right. and I just finally realized that I just couldn't do it anymore. I was, you know, unbuttoning my, the first. 
button all the time of my pants. So I bit the bullet and I went and I asked Robert this time to come with me, even though he doesn't like shopping. I like this bra though. Right. This is a bathing suit. It's very supportive. That's the kind I'm wearing, sweetie. It's right very now. supportive. Look, that's the one I'm wearing. I like to think there's a feminine side to me. You can't be in this job and not have a feminine side. You have to like women. You have to like women issues. You have to like women things. Uh, so I can appreciate nice clothing and nice undies and nice bras. We're Sydney. You Was that considered like a feminine side of a man back in 2008, 2009? So by him saying that, is he sort of suggesting that the entire lingerie industry is purely for women and not in any way, shape or form ever related to the male gaze. And not the male gaze, but the male gaze. Please, these gays, they're trying to murder me. Maybe also the male gaze, just a little bit. They love a lingerie. I could not believe it. These and nice bras. Where's Sydney? A pee you watch her more, Sydney, because I need okay. to look at the clothes. So maternity. Oh, oh, that's very sexy, very pretty. I like the spring colors, the spring pastels. I like it. Child. You look beautiful. Mm. I like it, sweetie. It's a little bit nice. I think you're pregnant looking very sexy. It was nice to hear when you're pregnant and you're 20 pounds bigger than you're used to being. It just felt nice to hear him say that it still looked good and I still look attractive to him. Mm. Interesting, because I actually feel like his wife is quite slim, but... Dr. Ray has constantly said throughout all of these episodes that we've watched him in that he loves a voluptuous woman, always go massive with the tits, always go massive with the bum. So he's probably very much enjoying her pregnancy body, even though she might prefer to keep her body a little bit slimmer. Now, you know, attraction is attraction is attraction. You can't really help what sort of secondary sex characteristics you find attractive, whether that's the curve of a hip bone, a woman's spine, Bejazzle. a man's ankle. Ankles are not secondary sex characteristics, Lux. <laughs> Science. But it's very interesting to hear him be so complimentary to his wife because in previous episodes, we have not seen that. Now that could have been fully edited out for, you know, the drama, the nonsense, the drama. But we've also seen a couple of other patterns of behavior with Dr. Ray that I just kind of don't really like. I, I could not have him as my plastic surgeon. I, he's not my kind of person that I would like to have in my life. Let me say that. Blocked on Twitter, girls. Oh, wow. scandalous. This is where my five minutes of shopping Tolerance ends. <laughs> I try to be supportive of Haley, but I just I can't stand shopping. I just can't stand it. Why don't we start I here and we like work shopping, through the whole though, store, so. just rack after rack, and then it's. I feel like when it comes to shopping, it's very like some people just really enjoy it. Some people just really enjoy going around looking at loads of different types of things. I feel like sometimes, for me, it feels a little bit like I'm wasting my life. <laughs> Like, if I'm looking for something and I can't find it in a shop or in several shops, that feels like I've wasted time trying to find something. I can't just, like, enjoy the shopping experience because I would much rather go to dinner or go to lunch or have a coffee or a chat with a friend or a FaceTime, play a video game, do something else social and outdoorsy than shopping. But that's just purely my experience. I feel like shopping for me has to be a purely functional activity. I have to have an idea of what I want to get, where I'm likely to get it. And then I say to myself, you know, I can only really have like a maximum of 30 minutes before I get really overwhelmed in these shops. Like the idea of going into something like, I don't know, off the top of my head, H&M and seeing racks and 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 racks of clothes immediately overwhelms me. And I'm pretty sure that it's, I used to call this product blindness. When there's too much of something, I'm like, I can't see what it is. I don't like it. Get me out of here. I actually have come to realize that it's actually a part of ADHD. So there you go. Then you know if you're finished, you're done. Mm -hmm. Shopping is horrifying. I, I can do horrifying. five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes. Tell mommy, mommy, you're taking too long. Mommy, you're taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, but this I is the most talking. time he's spent with them. Usually he's like, I've got Taekwondo, I hate you. Is that tea? Oh, surgical center the next day. The day next after. Next patient is late. It's a big problem. Right. Big problems. Remember, it costs $5.80 a minute to maintain this. <gasps> so when the girl's late, do the math. Oh dear. <gasps> She's an hour and a half late for surgery. Okay, hi, put your shirt Yeah, Okay. I'm sorry, if you were an hour and a half late for surgery now, gone. No, no, you, you've lost your deposit, you've lost 
your money, everything. That is shocking. 90 minutes late to a plastic surgery. I can understand that maybe you might have like nerves and feeling nervous and anxious about something, but that's a bit, that's like, that takes the piss, girls. I've got a bucket of piss, sweetie. Hey, hi, Patricia. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna get this started real quick and I'll be bringing you in. Because they the have to like- The orientation in that area is sore. It's like running three marathons. So it's very, very sore. I'm pretty nervous, but I'm just like, you know, I have faith. Oh, you know, everything will go. Now I'll have to make sure she hasn't eaten anything. The bad bacteria live, oh. right? Here she is, she's got an eye. She's a woman with an eye. Right, here we are. Thank you. Patty's surgery begins. Oh my God, is she in a pack? Oh, the most important I part died. of is the liposuction. When you set them up top, make a small waist, it makes the little butt look bigger. Yes. Oh, the bad bacteria live right here. So we're gonna make sure that we clean it very, very well. They come up really, really nice. It's probably one of the highest satisfaction operations I do. Really? With a liposuction first. Oh, here we go, go. And, uh, Shave the turkey. I don't understand. Oh, it's so violent, isn't it? There's something about liposuction. I have considered liposuction and every time we watch it in one of these shows, I do kind of think, am I really gonna put my body through that? Is that really what I'm done? Mind you, I suppose I've had part of my skull removed, so why not? Treat yourself to some shaven turkey. Right, is that the implant? Soldering iron. She's a computer part. Oh, see the, the hole, three. can you see the big hole in there? <laughs> So that's just a nice little comfortable pocket. Now, uh, people at home may be horrified, thinking, oh my God. But you know how you eat chicken at home? And you can kind of separate the little pieces of meat, like I say in a thigh, for instance. The little pieces of that muscle just separate easily. Same thing here. So I'm gonna put the input. I'm sorry, that is one of the worst things I've seen on this Chanel. This episode, my loves, is really testing my tummy. Mm. In about two seconds here, and adjusting the implant is uh, a pain in the butt, no pun intended. Right. Massive, massive struggle. So, because the muscle is so strong, he has to really like wrestle the implant in. Very close to that now, about 10 minutes from that now. Wow. All right, that's it, that's, oh. it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Is she done? She's done. Mm. Oh. Okay. Is she waking, maybe? Mm. So, feeling sleepy? Yeah. Oh. Well, we give you lots of happy stuff, so you're gonna feel very, very sleepy. Yeah, waking up from Your surgery. Operation came out great, 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 great. We make that mm -hmm. behind so pretty. Right. Like a little upside down heart. It's gonna be beautiful. But it's gonna be a little sore for a few days. Right. Okay, so just kind of take it easy and just enjoy your rest and uh, I think every we'll man should have a BBL. Every single one. And that's the Darjeeling. All right, sleep well, sweetie. Cake! A lot of breaks in this episode. Her eyeball is in the palm tree. Palm trees, daffodils, Beverly Drive. Dr. Ray's office medical building goes I'm gonna switch your medication because you're still a little sore, right? Yeah. Well, yes. Okay, so let's take a look. Take, let's take that Two off. Two days. Third day after now, surgery. Now, you're going to be day. purple from your chest down to your toes, okay? Why did, you, why did she have I like... you out so good. I took 1,200 cubic centimeters. Everything looks good. It's 1,200 cubic centimeters. Is that just over a liter? Let me Google this. I want to see. She's got a degree. So that's 1.2 liters of adipose tissue removed during the surgery. 1.2 liters. How much is that in pound? So that's about 2.4 pounds of fat removed. Interesting. I actually thought the conversion rate was a bit higher than that. I'm not sure I would get liposuction for only two pounds of fat removal, but I guess this is more like body contouring and contouring always uses a little bit of something just to create the effect of something else. So, hmm. Okay, let's continue. Very swollen, okay? Very swollen, yeah. Because you're putting up a little bit too much stuff, we're going to leave it in a couple more days and let it slow down a little bit more. Okay, You're gonna look so awesome, you cannot mm -hmm. comprehend it. I'm just okay. really tired bit. and dizzy. It's but I'm just in a lot of pain. Just, uh, <laughs> putting out in the doctor's office. Not rude. What's the word? It's a bit like, I don't know, 
Um, ah, what's the word? Be humiliating to be like, well, we've done this surgery on your bum, so make sure you have your tits fully out in the office. Dr. Ray is so strange. Like, he didn't give her a little cover up if she wanted one. Like, imagine having surgery on your ankle, and then your bo- your doctor is like, and we're also just gonna have a little look at your genitals, just to make sure they're still there, girls. Got the Thank you, Dad, for taking care of her. I've only had three dads in my entire practice, 11 years. <laughs> it's usually mom or boyfriend or husband. You're a good dad, okay? <laughs> Okay, sweet. I see you. Okay, be careful. That's a really interesting anecdote. Oh, look, she's all befuddled. <clears throat> oh, slippers! No heels for you just yet. Poor thing. The BBL waddle. Off she goes. Da 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 da! Will and Grace are on the game! I have not prepared well at all oh, for she's the blonde. arrival of my son. I just, um, Has she I'm always so been t- blonde? Wait, what? What's the continuity? Fired all the time. Uh, so you want the crib there? I'm having a crib here. Yeah, so I'm going to move this to the garage. Yes. Oh, the crib. Yeah, that's gone. The crib to keep her. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Ray, for manhandling that cupboard. <laughs> all this weight lifting, I'm struggling with this simple little thing. Okay, it's not doing any damage. <laughs> the coefficient of friction Little f I'm out of here. decreases as movement increases. Oh. What are you talking about, sir? Chihuahua goes! <laughs> the next Why technique is, down? is called a head against the wall leg technique. Sweetie? You are a yes. plastic surgeon. This may not be the right time to bring this up. What? But would it be possible to give me a head? <laughs> of course, being a man, he doesn't fully understand what it's like to be pregnant. So he'll do things like that. Like, oh, can you, you know, go lift Sydney up here or do this? and. I say, no, I cannot. I'm eight months pregnant. I'm not going to chase down the street, get the dog. I said, you need to start doing this stuff now. No, I think yeah, he needs to be, joking. he's so like self-involved and completely unaware that his family might like, need him. You need a frontal lobotomy. You're a very bad boy. Complete. You're not being a good dog dad, are you? Are you being serious? Obviously that was not going to fit through there. Obviously, uh-huh. girl. Is this the drama of this episode? It's like, watch a plastic surgeon assemble a table that's also an art piece. Man's in a turmoil against climate change. When right. I was going through all the pain, I was like, why did I even do the surgery? But now I'm very happy. I feel much better about myself because some people that do know me say that it looks better. Okay. This is cute. Makes your butt look big. Right. <laughs> she does have a very booty. And now she's at the club. I beat her, girls! When I go out with my friends, we drink and we dance. We have a good time. The butt implant was awesome. I just thought that it made her well proportioned because she was very top heavy and having, you know, the bottom just made the total package. And it Hmm. totally boosted up her confidence. She's known as a little J-Lo. I feel like I achieved a goal that I had. I want to model for Playboy because ever since I was a little girl, I've always liked how sexy they look. I think all of those females are very beautiful and I take care of myself enough that I feel that I could probably be in there. So I want to try to give it a chance. Wait, so she's never modeled before ever and is expecting her butt augmentation surgery to give her a chance to model for Playboy magazine. Am I right in understanding that? I'm not sure that I would agree with the ethical choice of that, personally. You can just say, I want a bigger butt because it looks nice. You don't have to come up with a storyline of, oh, it's because I want a career in modelling in Playboy magazine. Interesting. Very interesting. But her results are quite nice. They're quite good. She looks very full in jeans, which is great. Which is exactly what the point of butt augmentation is, isn't it? Right. Oh, so 2000. On the next Dr. 90210. What? Is the end of the I didn't even get to understand how much silicone she had in her booty, or if it was indeed saline. Do you have saline implants for butt augmentation? So my lovelies, I've got some thoughts. So, first of all, it is really interesting that some of the storylines that we access in this show, they don't seem to pertain to someone wanting plastic surgery just because they want plastic surgery. It seems like there's always some sort of reason. And I wonder if maybe this is more of a reflection of the culture at the time to just say, oh, I want this because it will give me X, rather than just saying like, I want this because I actually feel like it would make me feel better. So nowadays I feel like people will go and get augmentations, they'll go and get, 
maybe even plastic surgeries, with the idea of not being a model or progressing in your career somehow, it's more about like personal taste. Whereas back here on this show in particular, we've seen several different stories of being like, oh, I want this specific type of cosmetic surgery because it will help me be a model or it will improve my career. We saw it with the lip uh, implants. We saw it with the chin plasty and the boob job. We saw it with another rhinoplasty. And now we've also seen it on this episode with butt implants. I think the only time I can think of where that wasn't necessarily the case was the phenol peel with that um, ex-Hollywood starlet who was a mature lady. She just wanted to look nicer and feel younger. So I feel like her storyline was probably the most like conceptually contemporary than any of the stories that we've seen so far. Again, though, we have seen Dr. Ray in this episode be a little bit like, suddenly it feels like we've seen him become attracted to his wife. And I'm not sure how I feel about that because it's clearly related to how her body looks because he's like, I love you. You're so, oh, I love a voluptuous woman. I love you. Look, oh, sexy turquoise. I love it, girls. Whereas in a few episodes ago, when she was significantly less pregnant looking, she explained that he basically had no time for her. She, he was always out of the house. He didn't want to spend any time with her or their child. Like it just seems like his storyline purely revolves around voluptuous breasts. <laughs> Especially when we heard him say that comment of like, we've got a generation of breastless women now. Also, his strange little comment about like, I'm really feminine because I like looking at a woman's bra. Like, oh, men were really doing the, doing the absolute bare minimum, weren't they? Probably even less than that. I feel like they still might even be doing a bit of that now. Anyway, my loves, let me know what you think about what we've seen in today's episode. I have become a little bit more aware of how butt augmentation and butt implants go. I don't know if nowadays we would tend to see more of like fat sculpting for a BBL in terms of butt augmentation rather than like straight up butt implants, but we didn't get to see what type of implants they were. We didn't get to see what the shape looked like. We didn't get to see what the, I don't know, are they even textured? What's the material? Are they silicone? Are they saline girls? I don't know, but I must say that surgical moment there was the most graphic one that I have seen ever on this Chanel. And we've even seen some um, surgeries gone wrong. It's like chicken and a piece of meat. You just go blah and the meat separates from the bone. Hateful. But you kind of do have to be a little bit of a certain type of person, I think, to be a surgeon because you are technically cutting people open. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen here, my loves. Yes, you can. I also want to say a massive hello and welcome to Zeus, Natasha KW, The Chaos Collective, Darina Pina, Scarlett Parks, Samantha Vizza, Holly Rehan, Christy Farrell, Joshua Ainsworth, Tasha, Rachel Jennings, Alison Bibersack, and Scarlett Cipro. I think I may have mentioned your names already before. <laughs> Honestly. What is a woman to do? Uh, today's Twitch shout out goes to Spookless25. Thank you so much for following me over on Twitch. You're standing woman on the go. And if you want to be in with the chance of being featured in my next video's Twitch shout out, make sure you follow me over on Twitch. It is like Saria Plays and I stream every Monday and Thursday, my loves. I also am going to be having a very special announcement soon. And you guys will probably see it first over on Twitch. How mysterious. And with that, my loves, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Aloria, Dr. Dream Morella, Laura Ali, Luke Peterson, Orko Samoji, Andy Henry, Autumn Holly, Beebles32, Caitlin Coating, Camille Sara, Casey Donahue, Shell Herman, Christina Crownover, Christina Kyle, Connor, ContraPoints, Crafty Leaks, Danielle, Danny Smith, Deborah Gwynn, Donuts for Life, Dr. A, Jevold, Elizabeth Stone, Eric Castillo, Jarrod Pavlovsky, Jen Martin, Jennifer Herman, Jenny Hendricks, Caitlin Wright, Catherine Ritter, Lane Wade, Laura Jane, Les Banana, Lisa Pennington, Mary Siren, Mazel Morel, Megan Holly, Min Min TM, Moisten98, Mariah Sherman, Moldy Apple, Nadia Hamdi, Nixie Tricks, Paolo Rivera, Pink Caramel, Princess Lillian, Rachel VC, Biscuit Romano, Ryan Vita, Sexy Texy RN, Slampire Queen, Sushwa, Stefutex, Succubus Lena, Summer Neff, Travafol, Tromo, Victoria Carella, Zaya Naza, and Zoe Zevier. And you know what, my loves? I'm gonna leave it on the note of, if you want to get plastic surgery, make sure that you've done your research and that you understand exactly why it is that you want to have a procedure done. And that's kind of all I can really say about it, aside from getting multiple different consultations with multiple different types of doctors, so you can pick the best option for you. And with that, my loves, I'll see you in the next one.